verse number one. The Bible said, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose, and beside him stood all these other people. <laughs> and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he had opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. With the lifting up of their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Israel had been in bondage for a long time now, and God had, uh, had sent them into captivity because of their disobedience. And now the 70 years are up, and uh, God spake to Nehemiah to go back to uh, build the wall. And there was another man that God had sent back, and his name was Ezra. And he was to see to it that the temple was rebuilt. Now the book had not been read out of in years, and they sent for the book, and they said, bring the book. And the Bible said that they read from the book from the morning till the midday. And the Bible said they stood as he read. And I want to preach for just a few minutes this morning out of the verse 1, the latter part, where it says, bring the book. Bring the book. Amen. I love this book. Thank God for this book. I love to read it over and over again. It always speaks to my heart. It's never outdated. It's uh, always fresh, amen, up to date. Uh, I've got a lot of books at the house. I, I gave a lot of my stuff to my son when I resigned the church and went into evangelism. But uh, I've got all kind of books. And i got a lot of books on the Civil War and a lot of books on World War II and things like that. But... Uh, I can read a book and seem like uh, uh, it's hard for me to go back and, and reread the, them books. Did you ever have that experience? Some folks can go back and, and read it, uh, uh, the same book over and over again, but it's hard for me to do that. But I tell you, it's not hard for me to reread this book. Amen. I've read it I don't know how many times over and over and over again, but it's always fresh. Amen. It's always up to date. Uh, and it never fails to speak to my heart. Now this book will do more for you than the newspaper, amen. Although I like to read the newspaper, but I'll tell you this book will help you, uh, amen. It's got more of a, uh, a better outlook than what the newspaper's got, amen. Some people won't even leave their house uh, until they uh, uh, get the newspaper and read what their horoscope's going to be. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, uh, but, hey, this book, uh, uh, hey, it's a lot better than uh, than that. Uh, Job said, man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. That'll fit everybody, amen. Mark that down. Uh, some folks like to read the funny book, the funny paper. I like to read the funny paper too. I like that uh, comic strip, The Far Side. Amen. You like that? Uh, it scares me, but. Me and this guy, me and this guy link up somehow or another. It scares me. I like that far side. But uh, I tell you, if you want to read fun, hey, there's funnies in this. Hey, Amen. There's some, there's some funny things in here. Uh, I like the way old uh, Samson caught all them uh, foxes and tied their tails together and set them on fire. Run them down through the Philistines' corn. 
Uh, the only way that could have been better if it had been cats. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I like it. I, it tickles me every time I read. It tickles me how old Haman got hung on his own scaffold. That just tickles the fire out of me. Every time I read that, I chuckle about that. Amen. <laughs> yeah, funny. Uh, some folks like the sports page. I do. I like it pretty good myself, but. If you can read about, hey, man, if you want to read about a marathon, read about how old Elijah outrun that uh, guy's chariot. Amen. That's pretty good. And uh, but thank God that this book will do more for you than the newspaper. I've read it over and over again, and I thank God for the Word of God. I want to preach on bring the book. I'm going to give you three thoughts real quick about bring the book. Number one, bring the book and let me read about him. Amen. I like to read about the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is a book about Him. Uh, hey, you want a hymn book? Uh, this is a book about Him. Uh, you want a history book? Uh, uh, this is His story from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, it's all about Him. Hallelujah. He's on every page. Uh, and uh, let's just read the book uh, and find out what God had to say about His Son. Hey man, I like to read about uh, uh, how he tamed that old wild man over there in the Word of God. Uh, uh, that old man had been up there among the tombs. Uh, and the Bible said he uh, uh, had his dwelling among the tombs. Uh, an outcast from society. Uh, a wicked man, vile and vulgar. Uh, and uh, nobody wanted to be around him. And he was, uh, uh, he was an outcast uh, uh, up there uh, living among the tombs. Uh, and uh, look, the Bible said one day uh, uh, the Lord came on shore uh, and that old man fell down at his feet uh, and the Lord uh, cast them demons out of him uh, and they came back uh, and the townspeople found him seated at the, at the feet of the Lord uh, clothed and in his right mind hallelujah uh, boy, he had tamed uh, an old wild man and I remember 29 years ago uh, when he tamed the beast that was raging in my heart uh, and, uh, and spoke peace to my heart put something in me uh, uh, brother took the demons out uh, and gave me some peace and joy amen uh, I like to read about how he tamed that wild man amen, amen. In the preceding chapter, Jesus is out there on the ship with the disciples and the storm comes up and uh, the waves are dashing high and the winds are blowing, the lightnings are flashing and uh, he steps to the helm of that ship and says, peace and uh, peace be still and the Bible said that it became calm and and the sea became calm. And uh, brother, I, I can imagine in the very next chapter, uh, uh, the, the very next verse after he, uh, he spoke peace to the sea, uh, uh, the Bible said, and there met him one out of the tombs. Uh, and uh, I believe that old uh, uh, maniac was up there peeping over a tombstone, uh, uh, looking out over that sea and the, and the storm rage and the waves are nice and high. Uh, and all of a sudden, here's this man uh, that says, Peace, be still. Uh, and the, the, uh, the, uh, the storm lays down, the sea's calm. Uh, I believe that old man said in his heart, uh, If he can do that to the sea, uh, he can calm the beast that rages in my heart. Uh, and the very uh, uh, fell at his feet. I like to read about that. Uh, uh, that gives me hope, amen. Uh, I know some old wild men uh, uh, down in the mountains of Georgia and West Virginia that uh, God can do the same for them, amen. Hallelujah. Bring the book and let's read about him who tamed the wild man. Bring the book and let's read about him who uh, touched the funeral briar. Amen. And that little old boy got up from the dead. Yeah. Here's a mother, a widow, the Bible said she was taking her son out trying to bury him. And uh, as uh, Brother Hasbrooks pointed out this week, that little widow woman, that was her, uh, hey, uh, if she had no husband, if she had no son, uh, brother, to take care of her soon, she'd be dying also. Uh, and uh, here she's. Uh, 
Uh, she's wringing her hands. She's got a little bouquet of flowers, uh, a black shawl across her shoulders, uh, uh, going to the cemetery. Uh, uh, but out of the crowd uh, uh, steps an unusual man, uh, and he just laid his hand on the funeral briar, uh, and that old boy got up, amen. And the Bible said he delivered him to his mother. I'll tell you why the Lord delivered him to his mother. Because there probably wasn't nobody else around. I guarantee you, if I'm ever at a funeral and the feller gets up, somebody else will have to deliver him to his mother. I'm gone, son. Amen. I can see that old, uh, I can see that old, uh, funeral director, he's sitting down there counting his money. Down at the funeral home, counting his money. He's sit, probably sent his boys or some hired hand up there to bury that boy. And uh, here uh, he looks out the window and here comes that car, chariot back. Uh, uh, that, uh, that hearse, uh, uh, it's coming back down the hill just to fly. Uh, I mean, it's fishtailing like this. Uh, uh, the old horse's ears are laid back and his eyes are bu- uh, And boy, I mean, he's getting them boy. Uh, the coffins are bouncing about this high off of the back of that thing. Uh, and he comes screeching to a halt in front of the funeral home. Uh, and that old man runs out there uh, in a huff. What in the world's the matter, you idiots? Uh, are you trying to tear up my equipment? Uh, and what did you do with the body? Uh, the coffin's empty. Uh, and did you just throw him in the ground up there? Uh, and they're as white as his shirt. Uh, and they said, no, no. Uh, you don't understand. Uh, there was a man came by uh, and just laid his hand on him. Uh, and he got up, amen. Uh, and he went home with his mother. Uh, uh, Twenty nine years ago uh, the world had give up on me uh, some of my kinfolk had give up uh, they told my mama said he's just a rebel uh, they said he'll never be no good uh, you ought to just forget about him uh, but my little mama didn't forget about me hallelujah uh, she kept praying uh, she kept going to the altar uh, talking to God on my behalf uh, and brother one day uh, he came by hallelujah and he laid his hand on me and I went home with my mouth. I went home, amen. I resurrected. Hallelujah. I get excited about that. Yes, sir, I do too. <laughs> Dead and trespasses and sin. But I got up. Amen. He, la- he touched me. Amen. Put our home back together. Glory to God. Bring the book. And let's read about him who tamed that wild man, yeah. who touched that funeral briar. Bring the book. And let's read about him who took my place at Calvary. Yeah. Took your place at Calvary. Amen. I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. But he took my place. He went to the cross for me. It was my sin and your sin that crucified him. We had, well, hey, he had no sin of his own. Uh, he was a sinless, uh, undefiled. Uh, there was not a taint of sin upon him or in him. Uh, but bless his name, he went to Calvary uh, and took my place. Uh, and the law said, if you sin, you die. Uh, that there was condemnation. There was a sentence of death. Uh, but he went and took my place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Took your place. Oberabbas in the Bible is a representative man. He represents all of Adam's race, Barabbas. He was caught. He was convicted. He was condemned. He was going to die. I can see the crosses have already been made. They're leaned up against the wall. There's two male factors there in that prison. They're going to die too. There's a trial going on. And they've got that prophet from Galilee. He's on trial. And Pilate, wishing to please the people, and custom was that he should release a prisoner to him. And he brings Jesus out there. He thought, he thought maybe, you know, he was trying every way in the world to get around putting him to death. And he brings him out there. And they, he said, whom 
uh, will you, that I should release unto you. Barabbas or Christ. And they, uh, they or Jesus, and they said, give us Barabbas. And he said, what then shall I do with Jesus who's called Christ? And they said, crucify him, crucify him. And uh, you know the story, uh, uh, brother Barabbas was set free. Uh, I can see that old uh, uh, burly Roman soldiers going down there. Uh, uh, stick that old key in the lock and turn the, uh, and the, and the hinges squeak on that old door down there in that damp dungeon. Uh, and they look at them through uh, male factors that's been condemned to die. Uh, and they say, you and you, uh, uh, come with me. Uh, and they look at old Barabbas and say, uh, you can go free, Barabbas. And he's supposed to die too. And he said, why? Why? What's, what's happened? And they said, oh, that prophet from Galilee, that Jesus of Nazareth, he's going to die on your cross. You can go. You're free. You've been set free. You're pardoned. Your sentence has been revoked. You can go free. And Jesus took that cross. And Barabbas was supposed to die on. And he went to Calvary with it. And brother, he took your death and my death. And we were supposed to die. And he went to Calvary and tasted death for us. Amen. Right. Bring the book. <laughs> Let me read about him who took my place. Bring the book. Let me read about him who triumphed over the grave. They set a seal. And they put a watch. Yeah. Said, make it as secure as you can. Yeah. Do the best you can. Do the best you can. <laughs> but the third day, the stone was rolled away. Amen. And in all the archaeology discoveries, they've never found that stone. Never have. Reckon what happened to it? That big old angel that. That big old angel that come down there and rolled it away. I believe he just give it a spin. <laughs> and it's probably still going. If it ain't burn up out yonder in space somewhere, it's probably still going. <laughs> hey, God. Uh, God wanted to make sure that that tomb would never be closed again. And the angel said, come see the place where the Lord lay. He's not here. He's risen. Amen. But from the grave he arose. A mighty victor or his foes. I'm glad. Hallelujah. Death couldn't hold him. Uh, he was not corrupted. His body didn't see corruption. He arose. Amen. He arose. Just like he said. Amen. John and Peter came. And they found the clothes. That he was wrapped in. Like a mummy. And it had not been unwrapped. Did you ever see one of these case and tires? Did you ever see how they're wrapped in paper, some of them, when they're delivered to the tire store? You have. You used to sell tires. <laughs> when you think about Jesus coming out of that grave, and out of them clothes and leaving them just like they were, it'd be just like taking that tire out of that paper without tearing the paper off of it. That'd be something, wouldn't it? That'd be hard to do, wouldn't it? <laughs> and Peter and James I mean Peter and uh, and uh, Mark came or Peter and John came and they saw that those clothes laying there and they ain't been unwrapped <laughs> and the perfect form of him there but he's gone and they knew what had happened and they said the napkin was folded and in a place by itself. Yeah. It was probably folded and laid on the ledge. Right at the door as you go out. The napkin that went about his. They said in uh, that eastern culture. When someone would go home. Or go somewhere and eat at a person's home or somewhere. And if they liked the food. Or if they didn't like the food. They'd just wad up the napkin. And throw it down. Right on. But if they liked the service and if they liked everything and if they intended to come back, they would fold it real neatly. And there was a little table right there as you went out the door and they'd lay it on that table as they went out. And that was a, a, an unspoken message to the host. I, I will be back. I'm gone. Yeah. But I'm coming back. 
And Peter and Mark, they looked at the, the K, I mean, there's the clothes. But he's not there. And John said, Peter, look, look, look. Hey, here's the napkin. It's over here. It's folded. It's by itself. Uh, what that was said was, I'm gone. But I'm coming back. Amen. Uh, thank God he got up from the grave. Hey man, uh, they saw him. They they ate with him. They touched him. Uh, and thank God, uh, uh, he arrived. He was sinned, uh, uh, but he made a promise. Uh, he said, "I'm coming back." Amen. 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 Coming back. Bring the book and let's read about him. Bring the book and let's read about the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I believe in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. I like the Holy Ghost better because it's because it messes up Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> Shakes folks up. You know. Come on. Some people the, the Holy Ghost. Amen. I like it. Bring the book. Well, hey, if you just read this book, this book right here. Not Dr. Do smell, smell fun, not his commentary. If you just read this book right here. There's no reason for anybody to get confused about the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I, I love it. I like, I like the sweetness, the fellowship, the closeness. He's my comforter. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. The comforter's come. Yes. Jesus said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. The spirit of truth, not error. The Spirit of Truth. When He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He'll guide you into all truth. He'll guide you. I like that word, how be it, there in that verse. How be it. I looked it up in that old 1828 Noah Webster dictionary, and the definition of how be it is whatever the situation is. Jesus said, whatever the situation is, He's your guide. And it also means whatever the style is. He's your guide. God knows the styles have changed. Amen. Amen. But he's your guide. And it also means whatever the day or the hour. How be it? Whatever the day or the hour. When he, the spirit of truth has come. He'll guide you into all truth. Amen. Amen. He's our, he's our guide. He'll guide you. No use in being confused and bewildered. He's our guide. He's our guard. The Bible said, Grieve not the Spirit of God, for by your seal until the day of redemption. He's, it's His responsibility to get you there. If you hadn't wanted to go to heaven, you shouldn't have got saved. <laughs> because you're going. Amen. He might have to beat the devil out of you. Yeah. But he will get you there. Amen. He, he's, go, he's your guard. He's going to see to it that you get there. Amen. Some people got this notion that God's got two angels up there. One's on one side of the book of life and one's on the other. One's writing names down and the other's racing them off. <laughs> but that ain't the way it is. So. My name is written indelibly. In the book of life, uh, he, hey, he's going to keep us, amen. amen. He, see, he, he's our, he sealed us. He sealed us. I like that seal. That seal, you know what that seal does? That seal speaks of ownership. That seal speaks of authentication. If it's sealed, well, if it's got that seal on it, that means it hits authentic. That seal speaks of protection. My wife cans a lot, or she used to, when we was home enough. She'd go out there and plant them uh, white half runner beans. Y'all, I don't know if y'all got white half runners up here, but that's the only a green bean there is. White half runner. I mean, that's got it's got the best taste. We'd plant them white half runners. Be cold to the bone, or out working, or something, and open that door. And you could smell them green beans <laughs> cooking in there. A big old piece of fat back in them, you know. 
cornbread, okay. buttermilk, Valdea onions. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and beans that taste just as good as they did the day they was picked out of that garden. Amen. I'm gonna look, look, he sealed you the day he saved you. Amen. And he'll present you faultless yeah. Amen. before him Amen. in that day. He's our seal. He, he's our guide. He's our guard. He's our growth. What little I know about him, about this book, I never was fortunate enough to go to Bible school. I didn't know a fella could take correspondence school. Never heard tell of it. I was working, trying to feed my family, trying to pastor a church. I'd get up and preach. Brother Lanny, I'd preach on Sunday morning. I'd preach everything I need yeah. on Sunday morning. Have to go back on Sunday night, preach again. What in the world am I going to do? I done preached everything. Man, there's been many a Sunday afternoon. Alone with God, He'd show me something in His Bible that I'd never seen before. And it was always doctrinally correct. Amen. 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 I'll never forget, Brother Bill, the first time I saw the virgin, I knew He was virgin born, but the first time I saw it in the Old Testament. I, I went across that creek, and I'd go up there on Sunday afternoon and pray. Uh, across the creek up there, I had a stunt for a prey. Now, I know God, God can meet we in the bedroom, He can meet we in the study, but I didn't have a study. We lived in a little two room house. And I went across the creek. And I'd get over in them pine needles and around that. And I'd open that Bible, and on my knees, I'd read that Bible, and I'd cry and beg God to give me something. People was getting saved. I didn't have nothing to preach. And I'd say, God, please show me. And one afternoon, the Bible opened up to, I, I was flipping through that, and I came to that Isaiah 7, 14. I'd never seen that before. Behold, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive. <laughs> and bear a son. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. <laughs> I jumped up kicking pine needles everywhere and went back to church and preached on the virgin birth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Screamed and hollered, man. Uh, I like that. The Holy Ghost. He's, he's able to. Let me give you this and I'm done. Bring the book and let's read about heaven. <clears throat> I like that. I'm going to heaven. Amen. It's hard to get folks interested in going to heaven these days. We got so much. You know, we got money in our pocket, money in the bank, got money laid up, got food in the freezer, food in the pantry, food in the, in the, on the shelves, you know, food in the refrigerator. People got nice cars and nice homes, but it ain't always been that way. There was a time in this country, in this country, and some of you, it, it ain't been that long when people had to pray for their daily bread. Well, I told you the other night, my granddaddy got killed when he was 34 years old. He left six children. My grandma, they almost starved to death. There was no help. There was no government help. My granddaddy was just an old poor logging man. He, he logged for a living. Working sawmills. Preached the gospel for ten years before the Lord took him. And when he got killed, my, my mama said that it was Monday before Thanksgiving on Thursday. Mama was 11 years old. She said there was a knock come to the door that evening. And a man standing there just about dusky dark with a a lantern in his hand. And he said, Miss Turner, I'm sorry to tell you this. She said, Your husband's laying dead over here in the road. Said, Somebody's hit him. He's dead. Mama said their world ended that day. And she said many, many times, said Christmas coming up. She said Thanksgiving Day. She said her, her older brother. She said they run an old chicken that had been 
out there in the yard. So they run that chicken about half a day trying to catch that chicken to have something to eat Thanksgiving Day. Christmas came. She said, my, my grandma got down and got them babies around her and prayed for God to give them something to eat that day. Yeah. It's been a long time since, yeah. since uh, folks experienced that in this country. I've seen pictures of them refugees in Rwanda dying with cholera. I saw a little boy about two years old. He come walking, he just come walking like this. And then he just sort of eased himself down on the ground and laid his head over on his shoulder, I mean on his hand like this. And his eyes went back in his head. And I mean they got this TV camera right on that little boy. And I watched that little boy die. Starving to death. Disease. It's been a long time since folk knew about that in this country. It's hard to get somebody interested in going to heaven when you got heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. But as a little boy, I'd go with my mama and my, my sister. And they should get us ready and we'd, we'd walk to the meeting house and up an old gravel road over there in western North Carolina. And all along the way I could hear them old mountain people praying out behind their houses. And the old John Stiles, a deacon in that church, I could hear him. He's a little Indian man, stood about this high. I could hear him praying in the cornfield. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him. And I remember... Watching, trying to look through them corn stalks, try to catch a glimpse of John Stiles over our praying. And we get up there to the house, the house of God. And they'd stand and they'd start singing, Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. And as a little bitty toy boy, I remember looking up and seeing tears running down my mama's face. And I'd say, Why is she crying? In my heart, I'd think, Why is mama crying? But I know now. <laughs> she yeah. was a little yeah, yeah, yeah. to a land where it was going to be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. See, it hadn't been too wonderful for mom. 11 year old when her daddy got killed. Married when she was 15. Had her first baby when she was 16. I mean, boy, look. Hardship and suffering. She was looking away. Won't it be wonderful there? Yeah. Having no burdens to bear. <laughs> he don't tell us a whole lot about heaven. But what he does sure makes me longing to go. Makes me homesick for heaven. No sickness, no sorrow, no dying. Let's stay. Bring the book. Yes, sir. We got it pretty well made in this country. It don't matter. Sure, we have hard times. We have this and that. And I believe that's why God lets heartaches and troubles and tragedies and severe problems come in our lives. If he didn't, to settle down in this place. We get too accustomed to it. We get too. Some of you got heartaches and troubles and problems. But I'm glad there's a place God's got prepared where there'll be no sorrow, no sickness, no goodbyes, no separations, no heartache. Bring the book and let's read. Some of you ought to come. You've taken the blessings of God so for granted it's unreal. You ought to just come. Thank God again for what He's da He daily loadeth us with His benefits. God's been so good to us. Well, just come gather around this altar and thank you, Mama, Daddy.
you young people, you you children, you know where you know you're gonna have something good to eat directly. You know you're gonna have a good clean place to sleep tonight. You ought not take that for granted. God's been so good to us. Let's pray. Brother Buddy, you word to prayer, please.